This all came about because my daughter was walking out to the garage to put something in the trash. Here's the deal. I've got rats and they're outsmarting my trap. So what I'm gonna do is I saw this video. There's a guy online doing some rat stuff and he builds these little boxes. Then you put out food, you let them get used to it, and then you set the trap and put the food out. So we're gonna see what happens. And I'll show you what I've tried so far and what my setup is right now. There's our trash can and she sees a rat running from here over into the corner. And so I said, how big was the rat? Was it like this big? And she's like, no dad, it was like this big. You can't see my other hand, but you know, it was obvious from her description, it was a rat. So I came out to the garage and it had run over here. And so you can see I set up some traps now. That one, it set off very easy and didn't get caught. So I moved it and I built some stuff with sandbags because it was going up this little thing right here into our attic, which my camera guys had told me a while back, this one camera is not working. It looks like something chewed on it. So I'm gonna try to get something up here. I got some foam stuff coming to kind of plug and I might, I might take this whole thing off. I've set up some almonds and stuff and some sticky traps, but I caught this thing in a sticky trap before and it got away. So now I'm gonna try to get it a little bit better and you'll have to pardon the sweat, but I'm gonna take you up in the attic and I'm gonna show you what I set up because I did have a whole bunch of mouse traps this is what I was using because I thought that I had a mouse and I wasn't catching anything. And the reason is I didn't have a mouse, I had a rat. Apparently rats are smarter than mice. So this is my setup in the attic. And I know there's probably some back in there, but I know when I had some stuff out for mice, they were getting some of it. So. I think that camera is back in there. And so here's, you know, there's lots of insulation, but I don't know if you can see them, but I put some almonds and stuff, kind of making them a little trail, get them comfortable. They come over here. There's some wood there they can go behind. Now you see my rat trap here. It's got some peanut butter on it and some almonds and stuff, some cinnamon. So I took some cinnamon in my hand and I sprinkled it and then I blew it around um, just to get that smell out to attract them. And then you come around here, there's another rat trap. Now, these ones are not set. I'm just trying to, to make them comfortable. But I did set this up. This is screwed into a bucket, which is screwed into the floor. And I've cut the bucket out and I've... Um, I think that's Gorilla Glue. Um, not all of those peanuts and stuff are glued down, but some of them are. And the idea is it walks out here, its weight drops it into the bucket and it gets stuck. And then I got one of these, put a little strawberry and it's got a very, I don't know if you could see that, but it's a hairline trigger. So I don't know if I'm gonna catch anything with that or not. So that is my current setup in the attic. I'm gonna let that go tonight while I build my other piece. And then I'll show you kind of what I came up with now this little trap that I'm building, it doesn't really cost me anything other than the cost of the traps because I already had a whole bunch of scrap wood. So I'm just using the scrap wood, some screws that I have around and um, all you really need is some scrap wood, a drill. And uh, I highly recommend one of these little battery operated saws, makes things a lot easier. Now the thing I'm building here is kind of like a rat motel. So it's triangle, it's got five traps in it and they're all screwed down and it's set up so that the rat can't take the bait from a different angle. I used cheap wood so I actually had to use Gorilla Glue and screw it down and glue it down every night. Once I got finished I built a hinge top on, on the top of it so I could access it and there's also a hole in the side so that I could put a little dowel rod and put the rat traps back while I'm setting it so I could put the actual snapping piece so it doesn't get my fingers. And anyway, once you see this done, the rat actually can't enter from the side or back or top. It's gotta put its head in just the right place. Now this is the dowel rod piece that I was talking about. You see how you put the little hinge part back and you can put it underneath that dowel rod. And then you can set the trap and not have to worry about getting your fingers. 
and that worked pretty good. It slides in there. You just have to make sure that the hole is the right size. Now, like I said, rats are very smart, so you'll see them wearing latex gloves at this point. That's because I'm about to handle the traps, and I don't want them to smell my oils on the traps. And that sounds silly, but the ones I had are freaking genius. So either the traps that I put in there, and you can see that I put nails coming out the bottom of some of them, that's so they can't slide their head out. And I did have one do that. Um, so you got to be smarter than the rats. So now this is ready to go. And I will show you what my results were. So this is the final setup of the trap in the attic. And I set it um, with the traps unset for a few days using Slim Jims to bait the traps. And then eventually I set it on this middle one and this one next to it without the nails. And I'm about to show you what the results were, but make sure you stick around because then I'm going to show you um, how I altered this trap to make a single one that was a lot better made. This is my actual setup in the attic. And right in the center is my buddy that I caught and put out of his misery. One more thing you want to be aware of. If you have a rat in the attic, it got there somehow. So these are the whatever pipes run up from the air conditioner. I have some on the outside of my house, and I have some on the inside of my house. And that is how the rat was getting in and out of the attic, because remember, it's going to need water. Um, but I, after I plugged these up, I ended up getting chicken wire, because I put foam, and it chewed right through the foam. So I used some steel wool and wrapped it in chicken wire and plugged up the holes and screwed them around the edges so it couldn't get in or out. And then I also foamed that just to make a completely airtight seal. And that seems to have stopped them from entering and exiting. This is the inside access to the garage and that little square that I was working on in the previous video, that's where this went. And by the way, on the outside one, that was just the beginning. That wasn't what the final product looked like. But this one, I put up the, the metal and the steel wool, the chicken wire, and then I foamed it around the edges. And um, it never got through that one. So update, I got a second rat, but when I was looking at the images, there's actually, now I see two of them running around. So I caught one and saw an image of a second. Caught the second one, but saw the image of the third one. So... I updated my uh, little rat trap because the other one right now stinks and I think that dead rat will make them not go near it. So I built myself a little mini version of that big one. And I highly suggest, so I used actual good wood this time and it was much easier to put together. I've screwed this trap in there so it won't leave. Then I put screws coming up from the bottom because the last time, let me show you this one. When I use nails, they stick out from the bottom. So I had to actually kind of put it over the edge. So it had to sit like that so that the nails, because it wouldn't go fully into the trap. So this time I used screws that are flush with the bottom. So this was flush. And then I made myself a little top. 